Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Alright, so you're going to have to forgive me. I went really high-pitched in my voice right before we started recording, and now there's like something in my throat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I keep... <laughs> it's really bad. I, I think I damaged my voice, vocal cords. It's okay. Um... This is a Joshua Lee in the in the in the chat. Like, come on, man, you were. S- <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. Anyways, it, yes, you're right. This is not an Emacs stream. This is not an Emacs podcast. If you're looking for that, you'll have to look mm-hmm. elsewhere, uh, because uh, Vim is the tool of gods. Um, Facts. Just gonna put that out there. All right. Anyway, so this is the Linux cast. We talk about Linuxy things usually, uh, and uh, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about Linuxy things now, Tyler. You, my friend, have had an adventure. So before you get into your adventure, let's talk about the operating system you're using. So yes. last week on the podcast, we had a discussion where I showed my uh, absolute... Uh, I had no faith in you, my friend. I'm so sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had no faith because I w- was so sure that you would, there was no chance of you being on Gen 2 at this time you know, this week, like you made it a whole week and you are still on Gen 2. Yeah. Yep. A hundred percent on Gen 2. Now, I laughed my ass off when, because during a stream, during one of the streams, maybe it was during the gaming stream that we did last Sunday. I don't even remember. It was one of the times but somebody talked to you into trying LFS. I was like, oh, he's not going <laughs> to make it a week because he's going to try LFS. I got so, I got so happy because then I would have won, won our bet, which I lost. Which makes me, you know, sad. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Tyler's still on Gen 2. You're still having a good time on Gen 2? Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually really nice. Um, I mean, other than compiling takes time. Other than that, yeah, everything's good. Um, I, I actually have had a better gaming experience here on Gen 2 than I have on Arch, which is very weird. I, I, I'm shocked that you're still there. And uh, so... For those of you who don't know, we have a couple bets going. So, we just agreed to a new one. Every week that he's on Gen 2, I have to remove a linear amount of money from my Gen 2 goal on Patreon. So, next week will be 20, then the next week after that will be 30, and so on and so forth. Until the point where I actually, you know, have to install Gen 2. We also have something kind of corollary to that, where uh, if he's still on in two months, which will take us to April, right... Uh, I have to install Gen 2 then uh, in two months. Mm-hmm. I you guys can't speed that up by going <laughs> to his Patreon page. And now I know Matt would never shill for himself, so I'll do it here for him. Please go check out the link in the description. At least load up his Patreon page. Keep it open in your web browser and just consider it. Okay. He's a great guy. He could use the support anyway, and it goes to a great cause towards are, causing him immense amounts of stress <laughs> about Gentoo. <Jinty. laughs> there are also perks, by the way. You get like two or three videos a week early, you know, before everybody else. Um, Matt, someone who actually properly rewards his patrons. You know, uh, I also do blog posts and polls, and I'm supposed to do AMAs, uh, uh, like patreon chats but i don't do those i should do those um because there's like i got a couple like high tier guys that really deserve that but i just have not done it so uh Sade and devon both of you guys who've been around for ages uh especially you devon devon was my first patron by the way <laughs> he's still here and uh he hardly gets any of the perks like I, i'm i'm so i mean he's a he's a mod in discord as well um so thanks thanks everybody who's the patron and you don't have to support me if you want to see me Gen 2. I'm sure Tyler's going to be here two months just using Gen 2. I'm sure that's going to happen. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we all know there are people out there who would much, much enjoy the process of seeing you squirm as the dollar amount increases and you get closer and closer and closer. There was, there was a, before Christmas, before the Christmas lull came on, everybody kind of chilled out on their, their contributions, um, which I mean, happens every year. Um, but, before that, it was like up to $170. Like, oh my God, we're going to get there. <laughs> now I'm not so worried. It's okay. Now uh, now it takes all, all it takes is just one guy getting a super fat paycheck and being like, you know what? Matt really has been stressed out and working hard. He deserves a little bit more stress in his life. <laughs> all right. So l- talk to me about your LFS experience. 
Yes. Um, so Ben, uh, who's a fantastic guy, um, offered to, he's the one who helped, uh, me uh, install Gentoo, uh, as well as Scott. And I mean, I had, I definitely had more people give input and help, but, um, uh, he's the main one who stuck with me for the entire Gen 2 install. Um, and he also convinced me to try installing LFS because it would be a great learning experience. And it was. However, after installing it for 36 hours, still having the kernel panic um, is not fun. Um, now, granted, it was definitely something I was doing. I was doing it a little complicated. I didn't want to install it on a whole separate drive. Um, so I was doing some complicated shit there with Grub and everything. But it still should have worked, and it, it, it didn't. But I did learn a lot over it. I would never recommend doing it. Like, I probably won't do it again. You won't do it again. Okay, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Would you ever try again? Um, and before before I make comments on that, Ram just ram in the comments. Maybe Matt can solve his green flash in, in Gen two. The answer to that question is no. That doesn't fix it because yeah. Tyler has the same problem. He actually has to yeah. have two webcams in order to actually get this to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like just to prove to you guys, there's there's the Brio right there. It does it does not work on Gen two. It, it doesn't. Well, in in Discord on Gen two is the problem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, this is this is not a. Uh, a Brio problem, because I, I had the same problem. We, th like this happens with other webcams too, but this is a Discord problem. Um, Discord sucks. Discord. It, we we were going to try something different this week, remember? But we forgot. It doesn't matter. We're going. Oh, that's right. We'll, we'll try again next week if we remember. Um, maybe next week I won't be dealing with this whole, hey, I just hop distros thing. So, uh, <laughs> talk about. Let's let me talk about this. Okay. So. Back when we did, I decided I was going to switch to Manjaro, I decided I was going to take a tour through the other big Arch-based distros. And I spent a whole month with Manjaro, and it was an okay experience. I made a video about it. You guys should you know, should check that out. Uh, it was a good experience. I got gaming to work where I was not working on Arco. It was fine. Not really my cup of tea. I like things... I like the way uh, uh, Arch itself d does updates more than Manjaro does, even though there's apparently a way to enable like a non-stable version of Manjaro where it will give you the updates right away. I didn't even know that. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so my next one was Endeavor. Now, my experience with the operating system itself has not been bad. Um, it Things are working fine. I installed the Qtile version. Uh, the install was really fucking slow, but whatever. Uh, I, once I got installed, everything seems to be working fine. The, you know, the mirrors are fine and everything. My biggest problem has been is that yesterday I made a video about websites and how horrible websites are on Linux. And there's a lot of really good examples. And one of the examples that I used was that on the Endeavor website, you have to kick, click three times in order to get to actually downloading the damn ISO. It's not a good experience. And I, I don't think that anybody should really disagree with that. But every time, Tyler... Every time I mention Endeavor OS in a video, whether it's uh, this website one or the, like, I fucking put them in the top five Arch-based distros, and I got lambasted in their forums, like hundreds of comments about how much of an idiot I was because I put them at number four. <laughs> like, like, you're in the top five, okay? You, you've made the fucking list. You don't... Ha it's not a bad thing, okay? I could say something like Endeavor OS is the best Arch-based distro in the world, and there'd still be that fucking asshole in the comments that says, yep. hey, you should say something even better than that. I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> they're the most passionate people I've ever met about their distro, and I don't... I, I, like, I'm trying this thing, and I'm trying to understand it. Like, I'm trying to understand why there is... People, there are people out there who love this thing so damn much and so far now gonna it's only been two days i don't get it like i don't get it i mean it's fine it's it works fine it's i haven't had any problems but it's not anything special yeah it's all too similar to almost every other arch based district it's you an arch based district <laughs> I, there, there's not much here that makes it stand out to me. And, and there has to be something other that makes them say, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. 
uh, stop poo-pooing on our website, which, by the way, you still have to click three times to get... Here's how stupid it is, okay? I just want to bitch about websites here for a minute. You go to the Endeavor OS website, and you want to download it. There's not a download button on the front page at all. Now, there's a download menu, uh, like in their, in their menu bar. You click on that, you think, well, you want to... Then they'll take me to the download page, right? No. No, of course it's another. It takes you to another page, which then you have to click on another link in order to actually get to the release notes. And you, do you think that the download link would be right at the top of that third page, right? Nay, nay. You actually have to scroll all the way down to the point where you actually get to a list of the mirrors. Now, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever, if that's really the way you want to do things. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to drive some people away who are either too lazy or too disinterested you know, to actually search that thing out. Uh, but here's the stupid thing. They have a list of the mirrors on the front page all the way at the bottom, but they don't have links. They're just text. So you can't click on the damn things in order to download. It's infuriating. And it, I, I made this comment, or I made, I made this video about it, and the comments on that video were like, <laughs> how dare you say this about Endeavor OS? They're doing this so that you have to read all the stuff on the website before you use it. Don't you know that? Are you too lazy to, up, to read things? Like, first of all, yes. <laughs> like that should be what you expect of a new user like especially if you're making arch face distro like you're kind of trying to tailor to new to arch people uh, i gave we, both of us have given debian shit for the like last year because their website is horrible trying to find the non-free De debian dis iso is a painful experience this is <laughs> almost as bad i mean it's not as obfuscated as debian like they don't have nearly as many isos they just have one. Thank the Lord. <laughs> they just have one. But it's hidden. So it, it's a not a good experience. And the thing is, like every time I say something, I get comments. Uh, and, and like comments that are like, I'm worried that they're going to threaten the lives of my family because I've said something bad about their <laughs> precious OS. Um and like I said, I've been using it for two days. It's fine, but I still haven't come across it as anything special. It's just fine. Okay. So that... No, I mean, the funny aspect is people will most likely continue to do that because I don't... We are just such a weird community. The Linux community is the only community where the... Perva like, it's a, it's a very pervasive mindset of like, look, if it's difficult, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, if... In most other platforms, like Mac, Windows, you don't try and make things harder, which it like that's their whole community is like the people who use those platforms will argue that they should make it easier to use on Linux. We are no nah. like, I mean, if you're lazy, like Linux people do not like that. No, no, no. Do not be lazy. So Arco is my distro. The thing mm -hmm. is, like, Arco is my thing, and I'm biased towards Arco, and everybody knows that. I'm very, very honest about the fact that I love Arco, and it's just, you know, it's a thing that's out there. But I'll also be perfectly honest, Arco's website is god-awful. Like, it is so bad. Um, so, and I was honest about that in that video, too, so I'm like, I, I didn't just pick on Endeavor. Like, I, I could, this is a thing that exists. Like, the, the Arch, even the Arch Linux, uh, Arch Linux website... Not all that user friendly. Just Distro Watch, which is probably like the website that most people associate with everything Linux, looks like it was developed in the 1980s. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's also not user friendly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I had an experience yesterday and got pissed off at people in the comments. Luckily, I did not engage very often. Like, I, I a couple times. I, like, I couldn't help myself. I had to do it a couple times. Uh -huh. But for the most part, I stayed out of it. Um, you Endeavor guys, I love you guys. You're, you're very, very passionate. Um, but it's just a fucking Linux distro. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> like, it's okay. <laughs> it's it, it's all right. Yes, I think your you guys' website suck. Your operating system's fine. Uh, but it, it's not something to literally die on a hill over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, Ram, Ram, just Ram. You can 
go to the highest Patreon level, and then when you click the the that tier, you can type in a custom amount if you want to. Uh, but I don't. I mean, <laughs> just just as long as you know that that it charges you once you hit submit. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there, there are but no refunds. We, we also we also have to make this very clear. You don't refund it, and you become a legend. Okay, <laughs> like a legend here. You do get your name on the the end screen for a whole year, whether you support for a whole year or not, uh, at those levels. So, if that's something that's important to you, um, let, it would be a constant reminder for an entire year that this person here wanted me to suffer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I and and I say like should should you actually do that? Matt has to give you like a little personal video, like you know the first time he's booting up the system with Gentoo installed, he's gonna do a little personal video, like thank you for this experience. It's been great. You know, I you love get, you my stop Gentoo promising install. things. That... <laughs> I I have said that I will live stream the install. So ooh, it, perfect. If that ever happens, Ram just Ram, make it happen. Make it happen, Captain. Let's do it. Save your money for something better. <laughs> you just wait until payday. I'm uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. We'll be keeping an eye out. <laughs> so that was a really weird beginning to a podcast. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, it's not as weird as the, the the beginning of the live stream where we were talking about Kim Kardashian and her ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, and her well, sex tape. I, I, don't think we were talking yeah i don't think we ever talked about our ass we did talk about our sex tape which is uh, again it's very weird that we're talking about this in the actual recorded podcast much less the live stream but it was a great beginning yeah, I'm pretty if sure you would like to, if you would like to catch similar conversations because i i guarantee you that's not the weirdest thing we've ever talked about in in the free show we record this live usually every thursday around three o'clock now we're recording a day late this week if that happens, I usually announce that on the community page. So make sure you subscribe in order to catch that as well. So uh, moving on to the contact information. And this week's contact information is the last time I'm going to be doing the contact information in this way. I'm just going to point that out. And there's a good reason why. Because now, if you want to, I mean, you can go to the linuxcast.org and find all of our contact information there. And the reason why you can do that is because there's a fucking website there. Boys, he's fucking made it. I it dropped exists. the mic. It's there. It's up for everyone to see. It's uh beautiful. I mean, it is absolutely luxurious. It has taken entirely too long. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it is there. And actually, you wanna, I will go through and it's, show this. Oh, oh, before you show it, we should just go ahead and tell them it's it's soy devved out. It's got so much JavaScript on it. It's the <laughs> best. It's sick. It has zero JavaScript, Tyler. Take that. There's shit. there's literally hundreds of megabytes of JavaScript <laughs> on it. It's awesome. <laughs> No, there's not. When there's... they see the website, they'll be so confused. Right, They're gonna, like, I'm, wait, where's all the JavaScript? I'm going to show this now if I can. Um Which I can't, apparently can't. Where's the main main no camera? I can't. I don't actually have that scene because of course I don't. Um, <laughs> I can't actually show you, so there's no proof. <laughs> I, what happens if you add a scene while you're streaming? I'm just. <laughs> Um, well, it'll show up as black until you start adding stuff to it, and they can see you build the scene from scratch, which is not a problem. Main. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna actually do this thing. Um, add. Oh, let's see, screen capture. Dude, oh yeah. Main oh, window. That was okay. Now, this this is this oh, really really good. Um, of course you can't actually nobody can actually hear me right now because <laughs> there's no audio, but that, that's just there. I just want to show you this. All right, now I'm going back. All right, so it did appear. Sorry, <laughs> nobody in the live stream could actually hear that. Um, because the the new scene doesn't have the audio inputs on it, so there's there was no audio <laughs> input there at all. <laughs> awesome. It did appear. But now they do see the website. Like it did appear on screen for like two seconds, but I didn't want everybody to think that was the the stream is broken. So, um, go to linkscast.org. It's there. There's a website. Um, and on there you'll see links to all of our latest episodes right now. 
links to the contact information. I will have an actual contact contact page next week. Um, now that the website's up, it's really easy to do that kind of stuff. I, <laughs> I've surpassed the hurdle of the hard part. Um, mm -hmm. but anyways, I should I actually just, cause I'm very proud of this. Dot org in the, in the, in the chat. <laughs> All right. Anyways, <laughs> like it, it I would have loved to have actually seen your face, but I, I sent you the link in. <laughs> so do you hear that light light vacuum noise? <laughs> That's so hilarious. All right, this is a horrible podcast. We should start over. <laughs> anyway, anyways, uh, contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux Cast uh, on Twitter. You can subscribe to all of our stuff at the LinuxCast.org. Those links are there along with the actual episodes if you want to see them. Uh, you can also email us at email at linuxcast.org. Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can uh, support Zany by going to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash zanyog. He's also on Odyssey. Link in the video description. Discord and Telegram links are also there in the video description. You can subscribe. I almost made it all the way through. Fuck. Uh, you can subscribe to the uh, Linuxcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash linuxcast. Whew. I, I think that was I, good. There was some redeeming qualities there. So every week, Tyler and I get together, and we scour the internet, usually mm -hmm. by going to OMG Ubuntu or Nine to Five Mac, or Nine to Five Linux. Um, and usually that's what that's how hard we have to work. It's usually we whatever the top yeah. news story on those is. That's what we choose. But I'm just saying this is really hard work. You guys should. Um, you know, I whatever. really don't like you telling them my secret. <laughs> Anyways, the news. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not the one that's smoking weed right now. I'm just <laughs> neither am I right now. Just give me a little bit though. Uh, anyways, we have news. Uh, Tyler, what is your news this week? I don't have the browser set up, by the way. So Tyler, tell us what your news is. Don't worry, I'll I'll explain it. Great, Valve boys, they've released Proton 7.0, which is a, a big improvement, um, like big. Um, so the initial support for EAC with a couple games is um, there uh, and completely working. And then there's uh, they've added support for like local decoding of H.264 videos. Uh, we've got a new wine and DXVK versions it's based off of. It's improved game performance in many a games and made many more actually playable such as Forza Horizon 5 which I know many people care about that one um, as well as Monster Hunter Rise which is pretty cool and so there's there's uh, a lot more games that it actually does like it has added support beyond uh, the article that I've linked but um, yeah it's, it's, it's a big improvement and hopefully to God Valve can just keep dropping new gets like this until we get our uh our uh, Steam decks. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm. Uh, the more I hear about the Steam Deck, the more people actually have it in their hands, the more I'm excited I am about it. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. now I'm not as excited about it as uh, Garner Bryan is, <laughs> but I don't think that, that that's possible. He, he uh, has made many many videos about the Steam yeah. Deck. Uh, He's pretty stoked. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm getting really excited about. It. I'm really excited to have that actually in my hands. Uh, unfortunately, I'm assuming that's going to be like late this year because I, no. I did not join right away. So that's sad for me, but I am, but, but on the plus side, by the time I do get it, there should be way more games. True. Way more games. So, uh, moving on to my news item of the week. So let's talk about Facebook. Shall we? I mean, we have to, we have to, um, mm -hmm. Facebook and Mozilla, our two favorite companies in the world, are working together to come up with something that they're calling privacy respecting attribution. And basically what this means, it will be give advertisers, excuse me, it will give advertisers the ability to check insights while making the advertising privacy friendly. So this is an attempt somehow if you've understood any of those words <coughs> Excuse me, I. It's that when I went really high earlier, it really, it uh -huh. really messed with my throat. Uh, anyways, um, 
whatever those words mean, they're trying to go through and try to make it so the advertising is somehow more private. And they don't, there's not a lot of details here, but it says, how would it work? Uh, it would use a multi-party computation to prevent a single entity, browser advertisers or websites to learn about the user behavior, whatever that means. Uh, instead of individual results linking to track profile users, to attract profile users, IPA, which is what they're calling it, is a uh, aggregated system that does not link back anything to the individual users. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but does not this not sound exactly like what Google tried a few months ago with the federated cohort of whatever the thing was? Flock. Flock. Yeah. 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 It sounds exactly like that to me. <laughs> okay, so yeah. That's precisely same the same. Um, I think they're doing something different, but yeah. Also... I'm just going to put this out there. The abbreviation IPA just makes me thirsty. It doesn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it, it doesn't make me think of privacy respecting ads. It makes me think of beer, you know? <laughs> and also, like, I don't know. Like, Mozilla and Facebook are two companies that have both of them, like, yeah, we're not opposed to censoring shit. Like, we're not completely opposed to it. So, I don't know. These are not companies that I'm like, yeah, you go fight for privacy. Like, I don't, I don't really, really see that. But it, it, who knows? Maybe attempt by Facebook to like repair their image. I Impossible. Mean, it would be a desperate. Exactly. I mean, it would be a desperate <laughs> attempt. Like, I mean, the article references them as meta, and neither one of it, either one of us, re reference them as meta because they're fuck. They're they're just not. It's okay. it's Facebook. <laughs> Screw talking about the news for a minute. Let's just talk a minute about the fucking metaverse, shall we? I mean, we haven't talked about this yet, but god damn it, we have to. Because mm -hmm. you can't talk about Facebook meta without actually talking about the metaverse. And can I just say that I don't want to be a part of the internet where the metaverse actually exists? Because this... No. Here's the best example. Look up a picture of Facebook's metaverse, and honest to God, if you want to spend more than eight hours of your day in that environment, you are clinically insane. There are padded rooms that look very similar to that environment Pretty that they sure would be they happy to it. stick you in. Like, 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 it was designed by someone who was actually living in a padded room. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's so like I, I've seen the I've seen the video and it has like a like an avatar version of Mark Zuckerberg looking around on a on like a like a video game, but not a very like a. It's, it's a low poly, like a high, like a yeah, super low poly. It's like environment. right above. It's like right above Minecraft in terms of actual yeah. like visuals. <laughs> like, yeah. like like you almost expect him to get out like a like a cardboard sword and start beating on trees. Yeah. You know. <laughs> It is so bad. Like, and there's a it's, there's a news story yesterday where the, the like whatever they're trying has like three hundred thousand users. Like, there are three hundred thousand people out there who signed up for this nonsense. Yeah. Dude, there's like there's like more like there there's probably more than eight billion people out there, dog. There's got to be at least three hundred million of them that are stupid. Like, got and to be. It makes me so sad for those people. <laughs> I know. How do they walk like, and talk at the, the same time? <laughs> to, to me, the 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 best, uh, the funniest example in the metaverse is buying virtual real estate for for your metaverse. Because to me, like, I understand, like, maybe you buy some virtual real estate in some metaverse because you really like playing in it, and you buy it for like twenty bucks. I totally understand that because that's like buying DLC for a game that you really really like. I totally understand that. When you're talking spending the same amount of money that you would spend on a car or an actual piece of land on virtual land, you're insane. Like you're absolutely fundamentally insane because it's not an investment. It's <laughs> I don't care that you can take your DLC to other games. Like that doesn't matter. It's still just it no one it's a stupid investment. It's it's the same thing as CSGO skins, man. Right. Like, sure, you might own them, but you don't consider them like investments. Well, Muda, Mudahar a couple of months ago talked about Earth 2 or whatever. It's that uh, it's like a game developed in Unity. It's not a, it's not actual game, but people actually like buy like actual property. Well, it's it's property represented inside the game that correlates to real property on Earth. Right. And uh, they're doing it like as a investment. Like. <laughs> It's all through, of course, Bitcoin and, or Bitcoin, uh, uh, cryptocurrency and mm -hmm. NFTs and all this nonsense. Um, 
And that's going to be the whole thing. Like, that's the whole Web3 promises, metaverse and cryptocurrency. Like, you know, we've said a lot about cryptocurrency last week. But the one thing that we can both agree on with cryptocurrency is at least the idea there is good. You know, like, yeah. even if it has been bogarted by scammers and, you know, horrible evil people, for the most part, um, the idea behind a, a decentralized currency is good. There is no redeeming quality of the metaverse. Like, no. What's <laughs> and same with NFTs, because, like, I don't think a lot of people understand, like, NFTs, like, the only reason that people will tell you they're, they're, that they're valuable is because of the whole idea of the metaverse, which is stupid, like... What if I like, let, let's say this debit card that I have here, this is my debit card. Let's say I have this card and I, and I, so I tell you that this is a piece of DLC, but then I take the DLC and then I tie it to some arbitrary, like amount of money that I spent at some point. I take the receipt, I tie it to this DLC and also make it to where the DLC can be used in other places other than just the game it was made for. Is it now any more of an investment than the DLC was at the beginning is because the money that was used to give it the receipt value for being an NFT, you don't own you, you never bought. So it, it's not tied to this thing. That money's not the people can use it. It doesn't matter. Like, so there's no inherent value gain. And the only other thing is that you can take it and use it in other games. So what? Like, who cares? But the the problem isn't people spending money on NFTs to do things like that, like buying a, a gun skin to be able to use in two different shooters. That's an okay thing. Like, as long as you know that's what you're doing is you're spending money, it's basically the same thing as buying uh, coins in a game on your phone or whatever. To, yeah. Whatever. As long as you know that it's just buying something and throwing that money away, it's basically just for enter it's for entertainment purposes, right? It's yeah, to make the yeah. game fun. As long as you're doing it for that purpose only, it's fine. It's when it gets turned into, hey, this is a grand investment. You're going to become a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. We're going to the moon. Fuck yeah, off. That's when it's a severe problem. <laughs> you know, like, I hate it. At that point, it's just it does not make sense, right? So we don't need to get into cryptocurrency, but the metaverse. Um, I think the metaverse just proves that Mark Zuckerberg is a clear and present danger to sanity everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the man has obviously decided he's going to try to take over the world, but he decided that actually taking over the real world is too hard. Um, yeah. So he decided to create his own world where he could then be the benevolent dictator. And, yeah. you know, cause you got to buy the hardware to do, to actually get there. You have to then, you know, wear the hardware. You have to enter his world you know, he creates, you have all, to use his platform, his currency, you know, yeah. uh, you, know you have to go through and, uh, he, you know, he builds all the stuff inside the world. Uh, yeah. He can ban you at any point. Or, like if you say something wrong on Facebook, just instantly like, gone, not just ban you, but put you in like time out. Like, can you imagine, yeah. can you imagine like he says you can still use it, but in order to use it, you have to be in a certain place, which is like, uh, like a really horrible place to look. I like it's, it's like lime green or, and everybody's yeah. and all you hear in your, in, in your earphones is vomiting sounds for the entire time you're in, in, in the, in the room. <laughs> or like, I mean, here's another thing. Like, like, do we really want to live in a world where 10 years from now we're, we're having the bullshit argument of, of virtual poverty, how someone's virtually like, like, you know, like they might have good money in the real world, but they're virtually poor as shit. Like in a metaverse, like do do we honestly, honestly want to live in this world? It's just I don't I don't I, I don't think so. I don't understand. I don't. Maybe maybe it's just that I'm too old for this shit. Maybe it's that's just it. Maybe I'm just too old for it. and I don't understand. Maybe it's all for young people. But I've talked. To, I mean, you're young people. I mean, mm -hmm. you're at least ten years younger than I am, and you don't understand it either. Uh, no, I, I know the I know no the, I know the people older than me don't understand it. So who is this yeah. actually for? Well, it's for the very like wealthy people. Like again, if you can like for one, NFTs, if you if you research them, they are a fantastic way of avoiding taxes. <laughs> like an incredible method of of avoiding taxes completely. And then there's also the whole problem of most of the very wealthy people who are talking about the metaverse um, and crypto, not necessarily cryptocurrencies, but NFTs and this whole space and virtual real estate. Um, most of them are heavily invested in it 
And like, if you know anything about uh, crypto, like Logan Paul is a good example of this. Uh, so is um, even Elon Musk. Like Elon Musk buys a shitload of Dogecoin. He knows that all crypto and all all of these different markets, virtual, like all of this stuff, it's all speculative markets. Like it's all speculation anyway. So if a very famous person comes out and says, I've invested in this and I think it's funny, we should all do it. Ha ha. Everyone else is going to spread it around. It's going to get popular. And even if a small minority of people start buying Dogecoin, which if you know plenty of people, a lot of people bought Dogecoin, even knowing it was stupid because Elon Musk said it, they bought it. And all then all he has to do is just take the money he spent, dump it, and he's made a shitload of money and the market will instantly start to crash back down mm -hmm. because he was the only major investor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all pump and dump scams, always. And then we decided to take it into a, a, a an imaginary world. <laughs> exactly, <metaverse>. yeah. <laughs> oh, what is wrong with us? And, and, and Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, moving on to the main topic, which is source-based distros. Will they ever become popular? So Tyler, this is your topic, so take us off. Yes. Since I'm actually using Gen 2, I, I did kind of want to talk about this. I... As someone who's having a really good time with Gentoo and really liking, like, I really like Portage. I, I really do enjoy the system. I still w would say pretty vehemently, I don't think source-based distros will ever become popular. Gentoo and pretty much every single source-based distro, even the ones based off of Gentoo that try to make it easier for new users, it's not necessarily easy it takes a lot more um i don't know not necessarily dedication but it takes a lot more know-how to get to the point where you can manage your system um, all of the dependencies use flags how you want it built what support you want packages built with um i mean most people aren't even fully don't fully understand packages and the way programs work and what are dependencies i don't think these types of source-based distros will ever take off like and be super popular but i do think that there's a place for a a really really solid you like uh new you new to source-based distros like linux distro to come out um because i've tried some and they're not great um so i would be very i i think there's a, definitely a conversation we had over a good source-based distro that aims to be new user friendly okay so i'm gonna say never and in, in no way like there's no way ever a source based distro will become mainstream like and, and when i talk about mainstream i'm not like talking like overtake windows mainstream but become become a distribution that everybody considers to be like mainstream in the linux space and the reason why I say that is because the vast majority of people who use computers and use Linux even are doing so on a laptop. And True. using a source-based distro on a desktop, like you're using on a very powerful computer that has, you know, many cores and yeah. many threads and a high-speed graphics card. Doing that on a ThinkPad that is 10 years old is impossible. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, impossible, not impossible, but it does take, but it would take so you much longer. Three weeks to compile the kernel. Okay, I'm just. It would take you a long time, and then the fact that you have to do that for every program, every time you have to update, is just not feasible for the vast majority of people. Also, mm -hmm. it you were you're absolutely right in that people don't know about it, and they don't know the complexities in how to do it. Um, like a lot of the stuff that you get from the AUR has to be compiled. Like that's what the AUR helpers do, right? So a lot of that stuff is stuff that you are actually building from source, even though it still feels like you're just using a package manager, right? Uh, and every time I come across something that doesn't have a binary in the actual just stock standard AUR, it, it confuses me because like, why isn't there binary? But also it, goes through and like this thing takes forever on like on my machine like trying to compile on google chromium takes 45 minutes right yeah. and there's no binary like there's a binary in the chaotic aur i know this and everybody's going to correct me like i know that but i don't use the chaotic chaotic aur i just don't um 
So people are going to come across that situation where they don't know uh, what a package build even is. They, they're not going to know uh, why it just doesn't install in a matter, matter of a few seconds. You know, I think I think the really good point you made there is laptops are super popular. Yeah. Like most people are using laptops. And that's good. Um, now, Brandon's comment is kind of uh, highlighting it, the problem. Like, yeah. So he said it's not three weeks on the kernel on a thing fat. It's only 48 hours, which only further for, like proves Matt's point. Like, like, like that thing over there doesn't really, it doesn't really cost a million dollars. It only costs a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. like, like still out of the reach of most people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Most people won't accept their computer being down for 48 hours. Like, no. Yeah, and I mean, okay, that's why it's an enthusiast thing because the when you you do an enthusiast thing, it's okay that it, it takes an investment in time because people who are enthusiasts expect it to. You don't you don't go into Gen two thinking that you're going to be able to do it in a half an hour. I mean, yeah, I'm assuming that there probably is someone out there who could do it in a half an hour if they have like a, a really super fast computer or whatever, and they've done it many many times before, and they don't have to consult anything, and it's you know every, you know, they have super fast internet, maybe that's possible. But for the vast majority of people, I mean, even this last successful time, Tyler, how how long did it take you to get from downloading the ISO to actually having a workable system? Desktop, everything. Yeah, everything. That was eight hours. Eight hours, yeah. Most people aren't going to take eight hours to install a distro. It's just, no. no. And, and I would go so far as to say the vast majority of people are never going to go that... T- it's just never, ever, ever going to happen. And even if they found it a way, because, like, you got to remember, I've only installed Gen 2 that one time, and it was a failure. But there are binaries of certain things, right, that you can download like and install. Right? So, like, there's, there's binaries of Firefox. There's binaries of the kernel. Uh, even then, but not even then, but if, if you just use the binaries that are provided, then what would be the point of using exactly. gen 2 right the point of g- using gen 2 is then to control your your use flags and be able to compile the kernel without bluetooth support if you wanted to you know that's the that's yeah. the entire point so and i mean I'd, I'd agree there too i mean if i was primarily using just binaries here on gen 2 i probably don't know that i'd stay because i don't know that i'd see any point in it well you're an, i mean you're an enthusiast so you find the fact that you can compile things cool like cool look at me i'm a nerd i know how to do this and you don't nana nana boo boo you know what i mean (laughs) you know and and that's a perfectly fine way of looking at it i mean one of the reasons why we are nerds is simply because we know how to do cool things that other people don't know how to do and we can then lord it over them when we happen to encounter them on the internet I mean, that's, true, that's true. entirely the point of doing this stuff. The, there's a reason why the, sta- the, the the phrase exists, I use Arch, by the way, right? That's yeah. the, the reason why that exists is because every time you talk to somebody, and if you happen to use Arch, you have to point that out. It's legally required that you do okay. so because it's uh, a point of pride for those people. Like, it's become... It's become cliche now, but when it first started, like p- the reason why people said I use Arch, by the way, is because, like, oh, you use Arch? That's really cool. I'm stuck on Gen or I'm stuck on Ubuntu. You know, that's mm-hmm. really awesome that you you s- spent five minutes, you, you know, installing Arch. You tell him, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I think he just woke up from a nap. <laughs> like, ooh, podcast. I'm missing it. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so I don't know. Uh, like you mentioned the, the distros that are based on Gen 2, like, uh, calculate and, um, what are the, like, what's one of the other ones? Calculate is the one that I know that's really popular. I tried that one. I did not have any luck with it. Um, there's another one that I tried, but I can't remember its name. It's, it's not Sabion. No, cause I don't think Sabion's based on Gen 2. Mm-mm. I don't know. Uh, it d- Scott said red core, but I haven't heard of that one. Oh uh, well, there's also uh, f- what fun two is that? Is that fun- is that another? Oh one? yeah, fun two. That's it. Yes, I did try fun two. Um, but even those, like 
they make the installation easier. They I don't know that they make it faster. I've never tried any of them. So they they make it faster. And if they if they do make it faster, if they do remove the whole let's compile everything under the sun thing again, I question the reason why you use them. Right? No. I don't know. No. I would agree. So I guess the the the, the question to the answer is no. Like, yeah, it's always no. going to be an enthusiast thing. No. But most things that are hard in the Linux space are enthusiast things. Like uh, even Arch is still, I mean, Arch is only popular amongst a lot of people because of the, the meme of using it. No. Um, no. Right. You, 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 you don't necessarily install Arch because it's like the best distro or whatever. You install it because at least that first time you install Arch because it's, it's a badge that you get to put on your, your vest or yeah. whatever. Right? You're like, I've finally done it. I got, I did it. It's great. And that's the reason, like, I've installed Arch probably six times in the last four years. Like, vanilla Arch. And it's fine, but, yeah. frankly, I like Arch-based distros better because I'm a lazy person. And I enjoy yeah. having all that stuff done for me. It's just, it's easier, sure. right? They just take care of it for you. Yeah. Okay. So, that is a very, that was a very short main topic, but... That's the way it works sometimes. I think we more than made up for it in the beginning. And, this is, and we did talk about the metaverse for quite a while. So we did. We have, We are actually at 50 minutes already. So uh, there was that point right there around the contact information where I lost all the words so that it sounded really bad. So I'm sure I'm, I'm sure we lost about half of the people that were normally listening to this at that point. Um, but if you're still listening and you're still watching, congratulations. You've made it through. Uh, the Linux cast to the point where we get to the thingy of the week. Now, this seems to be the name that I've uh, adopted for this is the thingy of the week. So Tyler, you. your thingy of the week. I've gotten back into using Ranger boys. It's so nice. It's I don't good. know why I ever left. Like, oh, Ranger is such a good file manager. It's so good. I, I'll never understand the people that argue about it being Python, but, whoever like it doesn't matter people are going to be crazy like, there are those people out there who if it's written in python they just won't like it so the same people who don't like electron you know what i mean yeah but l yeah. at least with the electron thing like you can actually point to that uh, an application that's written in electron and say hey that kind of sucks hello discord i'm looking at you <laughs> you know <laughs> yes. yeah yeah that thing's yes. written in Electr electron it's horrible like we can all say that but python doesn't have the same problem like Yes, Python is slower than other languages, but most of that is in compile time. Like, and yeah. you're not compiling stuff if you, if you're using for the most part unless you're on Gen two, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> and and then the, I guess the case that Python might be a little slower for you, but for the most part, I've never understood the Ranger thing either. Like, you go to Ranger, then you skip down to NNN, and apparently NNN was too slow for you, so you decided to go to FFF, you know, and then you go to the LF, which LF isn't actually a file manager, it's just, I mean, it is, but you have to go through and compile, you have to go through and add in, it's like the suckless version of a file, hold on a second, why didn't the, the suckless guys actually make a suckless file manager? I'm just... <laughs> hold on, they might, I don't know, I haven't checked, they might make one. Like, that was a weird, like, trail into that thought right <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah ranger is really good like it has all the features like you can you don't have to go through Ooh. and build in any features and you don't have to use weird environment variables like you do with nnn in order to actually add features nope. um, it's it's perfect i i love it's been a joy getting back in and using Ranger. yeah it's so good i it, it's so good that i i will i occasionally enter it I'll, when I don't need to use Crusader, like Crusader is my baby, it's so good. Um, but I still use Ranger four, four or five times a day still, just because it's you know I can set wallpapers there easily. Usually that's what I use it for, but there are other things. Okay, so my thingy of the week is game, which I, I know what you're thinking, Matt. A game? Like Matt never this never happens. Matt, Matt never does games. Like first of all. I played Zero AD with you guys last Sunday for like two hours, uh, maybe even longer than that. It was good. I sucked, and <laughs> that's not surprising. You actually did good for your first time around. You guys went really fucking easy on me. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not so clueless as to think, oh, I'm really good at this. I came in second place both times, <laughs> you know, because of skill. 
<laughs> like, no, it's because you never attacked me until the end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but for a beginner, your civ, your civ by the time we attacked was not. I mean, dude, I'm telling you, man, I've seen some where like they just they don't they don't have anything. Like we got like ten guys. You did pretty well. Well, I haven't played any more this week, but I have plans to. I was too busy doing a website, by the way. By the way, LinuxCast.org. There's a website there. I just, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing that for a while because that was an accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, you should be very and proud. Before we move on too much further, I do just want to go ahead. This is sadly a little bit of self promotion, but I'm gonna do it anyway just because we might be able to peer pressure Matt here. We're gonna be streaming zero AD later on and playing. So to a, you might want to peer pressure, send Matt a few comments, messages, hit him up on the Discord. You know, just slightly annoy him just a little bit. Peer pressure him into playing games with us. Maybe the, maybe this weekend. Maybe during the weekend, I will, I will, I will deign you peasants with my, uh, with my, uh, with my presence and uh, kick your ass in zero AD. That's not gonna happen. Like, All he needs uh, is dinner, and then he's ready to go. The, the best part about that, like I, I, I know I'm, I haven't got to my thingy of the week yet, but the best part about the time we were playing is DT made a second account and came and tried to troll us all. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man, that's so not, that's not on. <laughs> we. We so knew it was him. Too. Oh, it was de- definitely we knew it was him by the time because he was kicking all of our ass, and the only reason why he, he lost was because Jeff is like God tier. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's all because we started picking on him. Like we're all like, okay, we all got to take out DT. Like this is definitely go DT. We got to get rid of him before he kills us all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he has this strategy. Like if you ever, play, everybody out there, if you've ever played Zero D, he has DT has a strategy where he'll attack you. And then stop the attack immediately. And then draw mm-hmm. your ass away so that you're away from all of your defenses and all of your people. And then murder all of those people. And then he does. He just leaves. Like He's, he's yeah. literally the biggest troll in Zero AD I've ever met. And like I've only played two games, and I can realize this already. Yeah, uh, he, 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 he will just call your population. He'll, he'll just take your people down and then just leave. And you're like, uh, hello? <laughs> You know, I'm weaker now. You could attack. Yeah. Anyways, the, so my thingy of the week is Spyro. Now, Spyro is a like a dragon game. It's You go through... I'm only in like the first level or two, and you go through and you hunt for dragons that were frozen by, uh, you know, the bad guy. And uh, it's a really big world. Now, I'm not going to call it open world because it's definitely not an open world. Uh, each level is highly contained. Um, but... Uh, it it's very well designed and it was it's very fun like you go through and you collect gems and stuff like that and you find the dragons and you attack some of the monsters and stuff it's it's very fun uh i will say two things about it first of all the camera controls are terrible in this game like they're really really bad like you control the distance between the camera and your character based on your where your mouse is on your mouse pad like it's really weird. So, like, in order to get your mouse to come actually come back, uh, like, the camera to come back so you can actually see. Uh, so, sometimes you'll get the camera, like, it's right over the dragon's head, Spyro's head. And in order to get that, you actually have to pull the the, 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 mo- the mouse back in order to get the camera to actually go so you can actually see things. It's annoying. Uh, the other thing I will say is that it does not love this computer at all. Every time I run it, like, it runs fine. Like, the, the, the graphics are really good. I'm getting, like... 45 50 frames per second which is fine um but the the fans in my computer sound like they're gonna blow up <laughs> like it's not it's not great so i don't play it all that much but it it was actually really fun and it it's uh usually comes with the whole trilogy for pretty cheap hmm. does the patreon link on the linux cast website work uh let me see. Yeah, it worked for me. Yes, it worked for me. Yeah, so it should work. It, it it did just take a brief second to load, but no, other than that, it worked. Yeah, it worked. All right, anyways, so that is it for uh, this week. Coming up next week, I actually uh, don't know what we're going to do next week. Next week, we should do... Uh, let's see. Should let's talk about Rust next week. Should everything be in Rust? So we're gonna get really nerdy next week. Uh, that it should be really fun. We'll talk a little bit about Python, I'm sure, uh, because those are kind of like the, the competing meme languages, it seems. So, 
Uh, that is it for this week. Before I go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. If I can actually do this, because DWM hates me. Um, anyways, uh, Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jack, Snipe, Tool, Steve A, Cybergirl, Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Archer, Carmen Day, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit, Six, Vlad A, and Primus. Uh, for whatever reason, every time I do this on the podcast, I can say those names straight through without any problems. Every time I record a video, it takes me 12 times to actually do it because I usually stutter on Jack, Snipe, and Tool, uh, and then I have to start all over again. <laughs> Well, before we end the recording, I do just want to go ahead and say thank you, Matt. I will be very excited to play Zero AD with you here in a bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Scott said he's excited too. This weekend, boys. This weekend. So, some of us, you know, have other things to do. Wives. You know, I don't actually have a wife, but if I had one, it'd be a good excuse not to play Zero AD with you. <laughs> it's Friday. Today's Friday. It's the weekend. Dude. I know, but man, I got work to do because I spent all day yesterday fucking around with a goddamn website. <laughs> You should be zero here. AD. Zero AD definitely ranks above work. A hundred percent. A hundred. That is not okay. So maybe it is true, but I will spend some time tomorrow watching some YouTubers play it, so that I can actually get some t- tuition here. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and then Sunday, yep. Sunday night. But the practice you get this afternoon will be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna let up because I'm. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping you'll just pop in I and will, play with us. I will hang up on you. <laughs> oh, darn, darn. I don't do well with peer pressure. Okay, because I just don't. It's all right. It's all right. All right. It's all so right. that is it down. for us this week. Yeah, Tyler is apparently gonna force me to play Zero AD this weekend. Um. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we will be at, back next week if you want to watch this live. Uh, I promise you that usually I'm much more put together than this, uh, which is blatantly untrue, but usually I try to be anyways. <laughs> uh, you can, so you can watch this live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's uh, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Colorado time uh, for those of you there. And if you want to other time zones, you just got to figure that out yourself. So anyways, we'll see you uh, next week. Ooh.